Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kate Mullen, and this is my first DerbyCon, so my first presentation at DerbyCon. Thank you for having me. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey to becoming a CISO. It is not necessarily a path that anybody else on the planet should ever follow, but you will learn some of my mistakes along the way. And anybody who ever decides that they want to be a CISO, by the way, you have to have a special kind of problem to like doing this. But if you do ever decide that you want to be a CISO, please reach out to me and I would be glad to give you advice, counsel, and uh, put you in touch with other CISOs. So, as I said, my journey was not actually a very straight path. Um, when I was younger, a child, um, computers were really in the province of governments, universities, school systems, um, and I was oh, I was a newspaper delivery person. Um, Actually, back then it was a paper boy, and I got my route from my younger brother. So back in the day, the town I grew up in, uh, the newspaper route was passed from person to person, and my brother was in elementary school, and it was given to him because he was a boy. And what happened was he wasn't big enough to actually carry the newspapers, so that was the only reason I, as a girl, in my hometown actually got a paper route. Um, I learned about collections then and decided I never wanted to have my own business. I did babysitting and um, I was very devoted to my father who was my hero and still is. I did volunteering as candy striper, decided that I did not like medicine at all because of that blood and gut stuff. Um, back in, the, in that time period, my high school had a computer, but it was punch card driven, and calculators were too expensive. I had a calculator because my father was an engineer, but we weren't allowed to bring them to school, so I actually used a slide rule in high school. So completely different generation, and the concept of being in computers was not something that I really thought about. So uh, when I was in high school and college, I worked for my father at Mullen Corp. It was an HVAC company. I started as a bookkeeper, traditional. See that adding machine? That literally was the model that I used. Uh, all of the bookkeeping was done on paper, although my father was, as an engineer, was he used a, a computer system called an apricot. It was um, a personal computer out of the UK and uh, kind of a competitor to Apple. So we were actually playing with computers in the early 80s. It was just a little unusual. But what happened was, and this is me doing a little bit of social engineering with my dad, which I actually did fairly frequently, and still do. Um, he had tin knockers, HVAC guys, and as a bookkeeper I was making minimum wage and tin knockers were making 10 bucks an hour. And I got to work doing tin knocking, which was awesome. But again, crossing that line back then, as a female doing um, construction work, it was really, really unusual. So I went to college, and by the way, I could not figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. I started in engineering, by the way, engineering, if you do not, um, um, if, if you haven't had higher level math, doesn't work really well, so change colleges. My parents put me in a college in Maine that had no interim visitation between the sexes. There literally were sisters that lived between the male and the female buildings, and in the winter there was enough snow that they could tell if you tried to do anything. Uh, it was a, a it was an environment where we pulled a lot of pranks. Um, I to raise money to pay for my education. I did tutoring. I was a, a um, um, a professor's assistant. I babysat faculty staff. Oh, I worked in the cafeteria. The jobs that paid the best were washing the floors and dishes, pots and pans. I did those. Uh, I was also on the softball team, and I was on the student choir, and oh, that setup was what we had for our radio station. I was the DJ at the radio station. So I was highly involved in a lot of things, but I, I was unsuccessful in, in engineering, so my parents enrolled me in nursing. Remember what I told you about blood and guts? So um, 
that was a semester. And then I went to uh, liberal arts. That was a semester. Then I went to general business. That was a semester. The head of math convinced me to become a math major because he needed enough students because there was another student that was a math major and needed to graduate. And I did that for a couple of semesters. Was one class short of a math minor when he said, oh, we don't have enough students. So then I became an accounting major and I graduated because I had too many credits and I was done. So the reason I wound up with an accounting degree was just time. I think I could have been a perpetual student. But the one great thing about the accounting class was I had a professor who told fraud stories. The deal was if you got to class and nobody had questions and everybody turned their homework in, he spent the entire class lecturing on fraud stories, which is cool because it was how do you break into systems? How do you, you know, how do you convince people of everything and anything? So in some ways, it got me down the path of what we do in a lot of our work as hackers. So Short story, worked for CCH, CompuTax as tax analyst. Oh, tax is really boring. I did get to work on system conversions. They actually acquired ADP, worked on that system conversion, but I was so out of there. So then moved to New York and worked for the town of Manhasset. And there, I my first job was a data operator data entry operator, which is really funny because in high school, um, my teacher, uh, typing teacher told me that I needed to go to college because I needed a secretary to type for me. Um, anyway, back then we were running on a borough system to do the budget. Uh, we used Lotus 123. Is anybody here old enough to even know what Lotus 123 is? Oh, thank you. Um, but anyway, um, uh, you know, so we were using, we were using li large floppies. Um, oh, and we still had paper ledgers. I also was doing more volunteer work because I, that's what I do. Um, and I ran a phone bag for a political campaign, which as somebody who was in their early 20s, um, directing people and doing schedules for volunteers is a really interesting activity. Um, I then moved to Florida. And in Florida, I got a job as an accountant. And the same, my 15 minutes of fame, it's over. I was called the city saver. The city of St. Pete had 32 checking accounts that had never been balanced, and I did that. Uh, I started doing volunteer work at GFOA. So the one thing I didn't tell you is me and public speaking, not so great. When I was in middle school, I tried to run for office and forgot my name when I got on the stage. So I was doing volunteer work, but it was behind the scenes. Uh, so the government, Flor uh, the, the Florida Government Finance Officers and the Government Finance Officers Association, I mean, these are really exciting groups of people. By the way, if you ever run into these conferences, get to the food line first because they will run out of food. Um, from there, I got a job working for Tampa City Council as their budget analyst. So this was my first experience working directly for a board. Um, the NACD is a great resource and it has information about dealing with boards. Um, they put out a wonderful or article about different board members and approaching them. Yeah, I lived it instead. But the problem with budget is it's make-believe numbers. They round up. There's no preciseness. It just made my skin crawl. I was using statistics because you just do all kinds of quantitative analysis to give you the warm and fuzzy feeling that the numbers you're giving are right. And it's like, well, I can make it do anything. And they're like, yeah, just whatever you're comfortable with. I was never comfortable. So back to accounting I went. So I worked for the Children's Board of Hillsborough County. Great little organization, except for I was working for somebody who didn't believe in computers. So they actually purchased a computer that I was supposed to convert to. But, oh, uh, you know, until we get everything done manually, you're going to have to wait. So I looked at this computer every day for six months. And I wound up leaving because part of my job was our payroll was done by ADP. I literally had to run a calculator and manually check the numbers 
from ADP because the woman I was working for mistrusted computers that much. It was a little bizarre. From there, I moved to Pinellas County Schools, 23rd largest school district in the nation. Um, it was a great opportunity for me. I started in accounting. We did system conversions uh, from a mainframe system to an AS400. So yes, here was a school system that was moving away from punch, punch cards to these magical computers. Oh, and they were actually going to be doing things like Excel spreadsheets, and I was tasked with teaching people how to use these systems. It was fun. Um, I was, at the same time, uh, a Boy Scout leader um, for my son's troop. By the way, the Boy Scouts of America doesn't really like white women um, in Florida. They make you wear yellow polyester shirts. And I don't know anyone with a pale complexion that looks good in yellow, and polyester in Florida is just cruel. Um, I was getting my MBA at that time, and oh, I was doing work with the Florida School Finance Officers Association. And again, much of it was behind the scenes. I was trying to do a little bit of public speaking because it was small groups. I was almost okay with it. I got a job as the chief audit executive, um, and it was a great job, but the school bookkeepers, most of them were doing their bookkeeping manually, and there were a few that did have um, accounting systems uh, to, to keep track of the books, and I was trying to convince management to give us a bookkeeping system for all of the schools in the district, and they weren't going for it. Well, I have a wonderful bonus son, and his mother was a teacher in the school system, and he hacked out of her classroom uh, computer into the school bookkeeper's computer. And oh, I had my business case, and yes, they gave me the money, and I implemented a computer system for all the bookkeepers, and it was, uh, it also had computer assisted audit tools, all kinds of wonderful stuff, having a great time with it. But it was a job that was a lot of work. It was a lot of meeting with um, parent associations, booster clubs. It was kind of a 24-7 job. And I was trying to have work-life balance because I had children, and I wanted to know what they actually looked like. My daughter would come to the office, and I knew I was in trouble because she was small, and she would she figured out Control-Alt-Delete was giving me the blue screen of death, so she would just come into my office, and, and just that would, was the first thing she did whenever she walked in the door. So so I went to the head of internal audit for the city of St. Pete and asked for career advice. And his career advice was, come work for me. Um, you can get your credentials, and eventually you can look at getting my job. So I went and worked for the city of St. Petersburg, which doesn't make sense to go from chief audit executive to IT auditor. but. It was the only way I ever thought I would actually grow, and I was very uncomfortable being an audit executive without the certifications. I was doing volunteer work at a girl uh, at, at a local kindergarten. Uh, I was on the school advisory committee for my son's school. I was doing Girl Scouts. Uh, their uniforms were much better than the Boy Scouts, so that was a good move. Um, I got a CIA. I got a CISA. I got a CISM. I was like credential crazy. By the way, part of the reason. And I got the CISA, it was, it was a job requirement, and back then the exam was once a year. I didn't know that when I took it. <laughs> so I was doing volunteer work for the local ISACA chapter. I was their CISA coordinator, and then I became the president of the la uh, local chapter, and then became uh, their CISM coordinator. So continuing to move along, and then I went blind. And I mean completely and totally blind. I was a, a fairly heavy smoker and managed to inhale at the exact same time as I had an occipital migraine. And it was, I was hospitalized. I did recover most of my vision, but I lost all peripheral vision for years. So yay, vision's back. And I go get a job at Hillsborough County Aviation Authority. Most of you guys would know it as Tampa Airport. It's actually multiple airports, and Hillsborough County is the size of the state of Rhode Island. Uh, I was hired because a friend of mine was the CIO, and there had been a series of audit IT audit comments, and 
she was told if she didn't clear them and make sure that they never happened again, she was going to be unemployed. So I was hired, I cleared those comments, within six months I was declared their CISO, and as part of that process I was like, oh, you guys have PCI? You should be PCI compliant, which they didn't know about and they didn't understand, so I had to bring that program in and all of the things that come with PCI. So part of that was teaching security awareness, and I tried to do some security awareness myself. I went through the office, I found passwords, I took pictures with nameplates. Wasn't very successful. Convinced management that I should hire some social engineers. Ryan and a guy named Chris Nickerson came in, and here is where my life changed. I was about 30 pounds heavier, um, but I was their get out of jail free card, and because we had uh, police officers with guns, and yes, they do use them occasionally, I went and kind of followed behind and shadowed them, and they taught me what they were doing and were incredibly gracious, and oh my gosh, they went so many places they should not have been. And catch Chris later, I mean catch Ryan later, and uh, the two of us will tell you these stories, it was incredible. The only problem with that is, um, I had, I was working with, I was working uh, for the CTO and the CIO, and they didn't want this kind of news. I did not understand the, I thought it was, oh, I'll show you what's wrong and you'll fix it. I didn't understand the dynamics. I didn't understand the social interactions that I should have had with these people. So I'm doing all this, you know, Florida Airports Council, we formed this group called WCS, C, uh, FISG. Um, the guys in IT weren't listening to me. They told me I wasn't technical enough. I was going to prove it because, you know, here, heck, I can do Unix. I can do Linux. I can do Regex. Honest, I can do all this stuff. I, you know, I can install systems. I do it at home. Um, I got the CISSP. See, believe me, I'm, I'm technical. And I also got the C risk and the C guide, and I'm doing all kinds of stuff for ISACA, and these guys are still not listening to me. Um, I didn't understand that. I had the role, I didn't have to prove myself to these people. I was, I was talking because I felt like I wasn't being heard, but the more I talked, the less they were listening. Because I really needed to be listening to what they meant and, not, and some of the stuff that they weren't saying. So I went and I took a SANS class with, oh, Ed Scotus, and uh, on penetration testing, because I was still in this mode of I am going to learn this stuff and I am going to prove to them all of this stuff that they should know, but obviously don't. And I was in the class and I wasn't feeling well. And I called on Ed and I couldn't remember how to RDP into another machine. And I asked Ed how, and he looked at me like, lady, you don't belong here. And he was right, but what was happening was I went blind again. And uh, I had what's called a macular hole. And it was pretty terrifying because remember, I'd lost the peripheral vision, and the macular hole meant I lost the vision in the middle. So I was like this donut. So I, I needed new surgery, and um, so I told everybody if the surgery didn't work and I went blind, I was not getting a seeing eye dog, I was getting a seeing eye pirate, uh, parrot, and I was just gonna walk around saying arg. <laughs> so, uh, surgery worked. So here I am, the CISO, and it does actually have a different definition. Um, yes, it is the impending sacrifice officer. When you report to the CIO or the CITO, oh my gosh, I went blind again. This is crazy. But when I went and had surgery again, I started appreciating things. Oh, Holly. I literally stopped in the middle of the street when I noticed Holly. My children will never forgive me for that. But I go back again. I am struggling with this concept of being a CISO because there are different levels of CISO. Brian Krebs has actually written a wonderful uh, blog about it in terms of when you are in immature Arctic organizations, you are reporting to the technical folks. There is no segregation of duties. You are not meeting the intent and the requirements. What you are doing is a 
technical security requirement. So this was an epic fail. Oh my gosh, I went blind again. Okay, I am not giving you any more blind things. It happened seven times. Okay, but, and part of it is my life is changing because all of the stuff that related to code, my eyes, I, I can see, I have implants in both eyes, but I have this blur. I can't read code the way I used to, which makes my life difficult. So I need to change what I'm doing. Oh, but clouds have texture. I can see texture. It's awesome. I just get migraines if I'm reading code. And I saw this thing, social engineering for pen testers at Black Hat, and signed up for it. Chris Hadnagy, Michelle Fincher, and Robin G changed my life. They taught me about listening to people and the importance of knowing what I, that I, if I listen to people, and heard what it is that what they were saying and what was important, I could actually improve their lives and mine. So I became CISO at three different organizations, Adventist Health, Health Plan Services, WageWorks. Do you remember me saying that I really, really didn't like medicine and healthcare and blood and guts? What is wrong with me? So um, I did this for a private equity firm, not-for-profit, publicly traded company, oh my gosh, every time for a CIO or a CTO, I am making the same mistakes over and over again, and I was done. I decided to hang my own shingle and start doing consulting work because this problem of working for the CIO or CTO kept happening over and over again. And I gave myself a present, and I took the Master of Level Social Engineering course uh, with Chris Hadnagy and Michelle Fincher. And oh, Ronnie's in my class. And uh, it was great. It gave me such a sense of self-esteem because I was doing things that, oh, okay, let's be honest. Part of it is a middle-aged, middle overweight woman can get into anywhere, especially if they do the Professor Trelawney bit. And if that doesn't work, I just pull out mom. Um, <laughs> so, but it was a great experience. I then also started doing a lot of public speaking. I mean, a ton. The last year and a half have been amazing. It really has. And one of the companies I was consulting with as a part-time fractional CISO is called HealthMap. And guess what? The last three weeks, I have become their full-time CISO. I have found a place where I am reporting to 